Hello, my name is Tony Blomqvist and this is my second assignment for the C++ Object Oriented Programming class. And uh, This week we got more knowledge about data, data encapsulation, how to protect your class variables from being used in a wrong way from outside the class. So um, our task involved uh, making our classes have more protected variables. Uh, for example, my game class uses two variables. We have our player object and <coughs> our also have a, a gold factory object. Um, these can be accessed by accessors and mutators. And uh, these accessors and mutators are described here. They return or uh, set the value of the private uh, variables described here. And the idea of this, of course, is to uh, protect the data inside these. For example, if we wanted our player object to be in a certain way, we could add the checks here. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have our chance to find gold, which is 436%, uh, uh, no, sorry, 43.6%, but uh, I made it into an int form. Um, in addition to that, we have a new include command algorithm, which we're using to make the user input strings lowercase. Let's go look at our main loop. Um, so in addition to the accessors and mutators, our main loop has gotten some new uh, things. First of all, we have our um, player data that we're now reading from file. So actually, let's go and look at the player data first. Um, I decided to use enumerates for the var uh, various options in the uh, player class because I really think that they increase the uh, legibility of the uh, code in later forms. So we have our gender and uh, race and class listed out like this and of course these all have the value from 1 to 3 and so on um, but of course uh, it's so much easier to type in warrior in the code instead of you know zero okay so uh, all our members are now private just like in the game class um, and here are the accessors and mutators um, and they are here in the code in their own segments uh, normally, you would definitely have some checks in place, but um, I think we're not supposed to get to that level just yet. Right, so um, what else is new is that we don't anymore have to ask info static function, but instead we're reading the player info from a file, which takes a pointer to a player object and the file path and we're calling it with these um, parameters. So um, in here we have the code that reads the actual data from the text file. Um, here we read the player data file which happens to be this and uh, we basically go through each line as long as there are lines and these um, the order of course matches to the order in here so we have a name we have a race which in this case uh, means ogre once again uh, referring back to the tree in here and then uh, all the other variables are read normally of course you would have many checks here to make sure that you don't for example try to assign a number uh, a text form into a number uh, integer variables but um, I didn't do these checks for this purpose and uh, after we're done reading the file we now have our um, player object and then we'll print the summary which is pretty much exactly what it was in last week too we'll just print out all the information in the program now uh, we start the main loop which is um, basically looping. It only registers two commands. It reads quit and search. This week, um, 
our instructions were to make um, the keyword detection uh, case insensitive, which means that, um, well, my solution was to make all the letters lowercase because uh, otherwise I would have to type in each variant of uppercase and lowercase combinations for the words, which really isn't very effective. So uh, quit is the same old, it just ends the for loop here and that's that for the program. But um, here we have our search command, which is new for this week. So um, our chance to find something was 43.6% which I have uh, mentioned here. And uh, basically I'm getting a random seed from one to thousand and then um, comparing if it's smaller or equal to the 436. And um, so what happens when the player gets lucky? Let's go and look at our gold factory class uh, here. Or actually, let's start with the gold one. Gold is very simple. Uh, we have our amount variable, which is really the amount of gold contained within the gold object. Uh, we have our con static int uh, minimum amount and maximum amount um, that really could be accessed as well, but I didn't do those. Uh, we have our constructor with an option to fill in the amount instantly and a destructor, and of course the usual accessors and mutators. Um, the accessors and mutators are here. In this case, uh, we are using a check for the mutator. We don't want to, uh, we don't want to, or actually we want the amount to be higher or equal to zero, and we want it to be lower or equal to 100. And if that's the case, then we'll set the amount. Now, uh, in this constructor, I have to admit this is a bit of a <laughs> problem on my part. Um, I want there always to be an in initial value. I want it to be zero if for some, some, uh, for some reason this set amount fails. So I will set it in the constructor and indeed uh, because we here have the default value zero, I would be effectively assigning zero twice to this um, variable, but to be honest, I'd rather take that than uh, risk calling gold without having initial as the variable. All right, so that's our gold class. It's pretty simple. And now we'll go look at the gold factory, which is very simple as well. Um, it also obviously has a constructor and a destructor uh, and one member function, which is to create a size T amount of gold. Uh, these have nothing special, they're just there, but uh, here we are, um, first of all we're getting the amount from the game code here. Uh, it's a random value between uh, 1 to 100. And um, we're static casting because uh, we have to use size t here according to the <laughs> instructions. So we are static casting it to gold's type and calling the constructor which creates a new gold object with the random amount of gold and then we're returning said gold once again to here to our main loop with the temp gold object and we are simply telling uh, by accessing the amount gold by using the accessor that you found this and that amount of gold assuming that your random roll was lower than 400 uh, lower or equal to 436 and in case you failed you found nothing and that's it the game will keep going on um, I think that's about it so yeah thank you for watching